And so we'll say file new um, other. And there's three choices. I could build a REST data snap server, which will use the REST RESTful web service protocol. I can build just a data snap server application. And I can also use the web broker HTTP protocol to build a data snap application. I'll build a, a data snap server on its own. We have the choices in the wizard, or we could build one from scratch. The components are also in the tool palette. I'll build a VCL application. Uh, we want to support TCP. We could choose the other protocols, HTTP and HTTPS. Do we want authentication authorization? Uh, do we want to use any filters like encryption compression on the JSON packets that are sent back and forth between client and server? Do I want to generate uh, JavaScript? files for maybe I've got a browser-based application I want to build that talks to my data snap server? And do I want to hook in a code that will allow us to build the mobile connectors? What mobile connectors are is the ability to have a data snap server in Delphi or C++ and generate the proxy information, the code that will allow you to call from mobile clients into the data snap server and to parse the JSON packets and to create the packets to make method calls back to the server. We have mobile connector support for, for C Sharp, for Windows Phone, for Objective-C, for iOS, for Java on Android, and Java on BlackBerry. So you have all those choices in the wizard. Let's just keep it simple and, uh, and build a simple application. Uh, I can choose TCP port, and if I add HTTP, it would ask that. I can make sure that port is not taken. You can put whatever port you want in there. And I'm going to have a server module, so I'm going to put some database operations inside of uh, my data snap server. If it was just methods... I'd choose T component. Uh, if it was just database access, but no kind of server, the server module gives me lifetime support for everything that's in the connection. For example, when a client connects and goes away, then it goes away. Or when the conversation is still going on, keep it together or do server side control of the life cycle of each connection. So I'll choose the server module, which gives me total control. And ultimately, it all boils down to three components the, D the data snap server component which lets me decide if the data snap server is going to start automatically, or maybe you want to have the, your data snap server run at midnight for like 10 minutes, for example, with a timer. And it has some events, for example, to keep track of who's connecting, when they connect, disconnect, you might log information. Uh, if an error occurs, you might log information through these event handlers. We have the DSS server class, and the DSS server class is where we specify the lifecycle. The choices are invocation when a client connects to the data snap server, it calls methods, does an operation, and then when that operation is done, it shuts down the connection to the client. Session means as long as the data snap client is connected to the data, data snap server, it'll keep a separate thread running for that connection. It'll keep it going until the client says goodbye and then that session shuts down. Or I could decide to manage the connections myself on the server by setting lifecycle to server. I'll use session management here. And then finally, there's this transport and the the transport, there's one for TCP, one for HTTP, and HTTPS. Now, server methods has a couple of things. In the public area, you can specify any methods that you want to provide in your data snap server. And then in my, my main unit, that's just the user interface of my, uh, of my data snap server. So I'll put a T panel down here, and I'll just say this is my Delphi data snap server. And then in the other thing in the server methods unit, which is uh, which will be managed, I'm, I can put some database operations. So let's put a, a SQL connection. Let's use DB Express this, and we'll go and I already have an employee uh, connection, and then we'll go and put a SQL query and connect it up to the SQL connection, and then put a SQL select statement. And so we'll say select star from customer, and then the last thing is we need to add a data set provider. And the data set provider is going to provide to any clients, it'll give us the data and metadata. So we're going to connect it to the data set, which is the SQL query. And we'll save all of this. Let's can now run this data snap server. And the first time you run it, you'll get this Windows firewall warning that says this, this application called PDT server isn't known and it wants to access a port. So do we want to allow it? And we can allow it. And so the next time we start it, it will uh, we'll just let it run. Let's go back now into the project group, and we're going to add a new project. We'll add a, uh, a FireMonkey client. Uh, we'll do an HD FireMonkey application. Now, to connect to our DataSnap server, we use the same DB Express framework, so we'll put a SQL connection component down. In this case, we'll use the DataSnap driver, and that DataSnap driver, look at its parameters, it's talking through port 211. 
since I want my FireMonkey client application to work on Windows and Macintosh, I'm going to need to put uh, the host IP address here of my server, my DataSnap server. And so I'll take the address of the machine where my DataSnap server is going to be running, which is the IP address of my Windows virtual machine, and I will paste that in here instead of localhost. I will put down a DS provider connection component, and it will go through the uh, SQL connection. And the other property I have to set is the server class name. The server class name comes from over here, and it's called server methods one is the name of the server class that is for the server methods, which also contains our database operations. So we'll put the server class name T server methods one, and then we'll try to connect. And if everything is okay, I've connected my client to the data step server, which is over there. The other thing I need to do is I need to generate the interfaces for whatever is on the data snap server side. And I can do that by selecting the SQL connection component, right mouse click, choose from the menu item, generate data snap client classes, and it generates uh, the interfaces for all of my uh, methods, including how to connect from the client to the server, how to call methods uh, on the server, and we'll save all of this now. So the other thing I need to do is use the unit that was just generated, that proxy unit that was generated from the interfaces, which was called unit four. And I'll put down now the FireMonkey grid from TMS. So I need to put a client data set down. And the client data set is going to talk through the remote server, which is my DS provider connection, which talks through the SQL connection to get to DataSnap. And then from that, I can get the provider name, because it's, since my DataSnap server is running and I just connected to it, it can query the interfaces and find, oh, there, I might have multiple data set providers over on my DataSnap server side. And then I can bind by bringing up the live binding designer. I can bind the client. Well, let's activate the client data set first so we can get the metadata and data. Here it is. Notice it just showed up in the, in the visual designer. And I can say, let's connect the client data set to the grid. And now I've got data live in my client. Let's run this client on Windows. And again, this client is talking to my data snap server, which is this thing that's running over here on Windows. And I've got data, and I could put a navigator and other things down. Here's the, the FireMonkey grid from TMS software. I can also add a another platform. Let's run this on uh, on OS 10 to show that the f the grid and also the data snap client technology uh, works on Windows and Macintosh. This is the FireMonkey grid from TMS. Uh, before I deploy, I need to add one other file into the deployment list. Uh, it's a feature file, which is the Midas library, which will give us the support for the client data set. So I add that to the files to be deployed to my Macintosh. And then I'll just run, and it will compile an OS 10 version of that client using live bindings, using the TMS FireMonkey grid. And then it will deploy it through the IDE. I have my platform assistant server running on the Macintosh, and I can run the client over on the Macintosh using the TMS FireMonkey grid. And again, here's the TMS grid running in a DataSnap client on Macintosh using the Macintosh style. 